Today we're talking about parabolas, and at first instinct you're probably thinking that that seems really silly because we spend all of Unit 4 talking about quadratics and parabolas. But today we're talking about parabolas in a whole new context. We're talking about them as one of the four examples of conic sections. Conic sections are shapes that are formed if you take a cone and you stand it on end with an identical cone, so they're point to point. And then you cut this cone along different planes. So you could pass a plane through the cone parallel to the base or parallel to one side but coming out the bottom. You could just throw it through on some wacky angle. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can cut the cone. And each of the ways that you cut the cone creates a different cross-sectional area. So for example, if you cut parallel to the base, if you were to peel the cone apart, you'd see a perfect circle. Whereas if you went in one side out the other, now you've stretched that circle and you've got an ellipse. So when we talk about conic sections, we're talking about shapes that are formed by cutting one or both of a pair of cones stacked end to end. And the parabola is one of those shapes. So I want to give you a new definition of the parabola. In the past, we thought of the parabola simply as being the shape that you get when you graph a quadratic. But actually, a parabola exists as a geometric object all on its own, and it doesn't require that equation of a quadratic in order to exist. So I'm going to show you something. I want you to notice that there's this point A off on the left. There's a point F, in this case locked to the y-axis, and a point B locked on something called the directrix. So I'm going to take this point. Oop, I take that back. I'm going to fix that. Okay. I'm going to take the point B that lies along the directrix, and I'm just going to slide it along. And you'll notice what happens to this point A. It's leaving its trace behind to make it really clear, but notice that point A is tracing out a parabola. That's a shape that we're familiar with. But you're going to notice that there's some dot, dashed lines on here. And up on the left corner, it says the measure of segment AV is equal to 8.79 centimeters, and the measure of segment FA is equal to 8.79 centimeters. Now, those won't always stay 8.79. But now that I've drawn your attention to them, as I move B, you should notice that they are always the same as each other, even though they're not always the same. And this actually brings us to the definition of a parabola. So a parabola is the collection of all points, or in math language, that's called the locus of points, which are equidistant from a point F and a point on the line. So this line is running perpendicular to the y-axis, and we're talking about the distance from the focus, the point F, to the parabola, and then from that same point of the parabola down along a perpendicular to this line B. So that's actually the definition of a parabola. There are a couple of other links in this top section in OneNote that I would encourage you to explore on your own, but I'm not going to take the time to go through them in the video and jump straight into the note sheet. So up on the top of our notes, we see not only is our parabola defined differently, right? The parabola, the fixed point is called the focus of a parabola that we were talking about before. The fixed line is called the directrix. And the distance, we didn't talk about this one, the distance between the vertex and the focus is called the focal length. So that would be this distance here or um, that distance there, so the distance between the vertex and the focal length. That, of course, is the same as the distance from the vertex to the directrix, since any point on the parabola has to be equal distance from both the focus and the directrix. So the definition I mentioned before is right here. A parabola is the set of all points in a plane that are the same distance from a fixed line and a fixed point not on the line. Now, you'll also notice that all of a sudden, parabolas are allowed to go sideways. So one of the things to realize about conic sections is we're no longer stuck with only looking at functions. Pretty much all year long, we've looked at functions. But all of a sudden, in the conic sections, we throw that out the window, and parabolas are allowed to go sideways. 
Um, and this is important because most of the column exceptions actually would not be functions. But that does change our equation a little bit. So if I have a typical parabola that hasn't been translated anywhere, we would expect the equation to be y equals ax to the second. But if we tip that parabola on the side, we've essentially taken its inverse. Notice the graph on the right is the reflection across the line y equals x of the graph on the left. And we know that that means they're inverse functions. So we swap x and y, and we get x equals ay squared. And unlike when we were studying functions and their inverses and we always solved for y because what we wanted was a function, in this case we don't solve for y. We go ahead and leave it equal to x and that's the standard form of our parabola. Now a, we've always just described as being like the thing that controls vertical stretch or compression, but a actually also has a definition. a can be calculated as 1 over 4c, where c is the focal length. So that stretch is actually controlled by the focal length of the parabola. It's not just some random number. All right, so we're going to solve some problems. It says, what is an equation of the parabola with the vertex at the origin and a focus of 0, 2? Okay, well, if they're telling us that the vertex is at the origin and the focus is at 0, 2, we're going to draw a quick sketch. So my vertex is here and my focus is here. Well, if you notice, the focus is always sort of surrounded by the parabola. So the parabola has to surround that focus. So we now know that this is an opening up parabola, which means it fits the form y equals ax squared. Now, we actually know something else. We know that if this is at 2 and this is at 0, the focal length has a length of 2, right? The distance from the focus to the vertex. Well, we know that A has this handy little formula, 1 over 4C. So if C is 2, then we know that A is 1 8. So the equation for this parabola is Y equals 1 8 X squared. And there's no more work to be done than that. So notice all of a sudden you have a means of writing an equation for a parabola without knowing any points on the parabola other than the vertex. But you do need to know the focal length because the focal length is what actually determines shape. Next, we're asked, what are the focus and directrix of the parabola with the equation y equals 6x squared? Well, first of all, we look at that and realize it's in the traditional form that we're used to. So this must be a parabola that looks a lot like the one in part 1a. So I know the focus is going to be up here. Well, if the parabola is sort of going to either side of the y-axis, then the directrix has to be perpendicular to the y-axis. It's just the relationship of the way the parts always go. And we know that all horizontal lines are y equals some number. Well, if we think about this, if c is the distance from the vertex to the focus, c is also the distance from the vertex to the directrix. So this line is at a negative c, right? It's c spaces down from the origin. So if we can figure out what c is, we'll be able to figure out the coordinates for the focus as well as the equation for the directrix. So we know that a is 6 in this case because we can see it in the equation. But we also know that a is 1 over 4c, so we can do a substitution. There's a couple of different ways you can think about this. You can just think of clearing the fraction. So multiply both sides by 4c, and you have 1 equals 24c. You also could have thought of putting 1 under the 6 to make it look like a proportion, and then cross multiply to get rid of your denominators. Now we're trying to solve for c, so we're going to divide both sides by 24. So we know that the focal length is 1 24. Well, the focus is up 1 24th of a space from the vertex. So the focus must have coordinates 0, 1 24. Whereas the directrix is a horizontal line that's 1 24th of a space below the x-axis because it's parallel to the x-axis. So the directrix has the equation y equals negative 1 24. 
Next, in part two, we're asked, what is the equation of a parabola with a vertex at the origin and a directrix of x equals negative 1 eighth? Okay, so x equals, that's a vertical line. But the vertex is still at the origin. In fact, everything we're going to look at today has the vertex at the origin. We will get to a point where we look at parabolas translated off the origin, but that will come later in the unit. So I start by drawing my axes, and I'm going to make my sketch like usual. The vertical line x equals negative 1 eighth would be over here. So there's my directrix. My vertex is at the origin. My focus has to be in the opposite direction from my directrix, and my parabola has to bend around the focus. So now I've got my rough sketch, and I immediately realize this is not a y equals parabola. This is an x equals parabola. So we're asked to come up with an equation for that parabola. Well, if the directrix is at negative 1 eighth, and we're in reference to the origin here, that means c is equal to 1 eighth, right? The length is equal to 1 eighth. So with a focal length of 1 eighth, I know a equals 1 over 4c, where c is 1 eighth. Well, that's 1 over 1 half. And we know that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is 1 times 2, or 2. So following the form of x equals a y squared, I can say this is x equals 2 y squared. Now, we do want to keep in mind, if the parabola opens to the right, right, that's opening in a positive x direction, so you'll have a positive a. If the parabola had opened to the left, that's opening in a negative x direction, so we would have a negative a. In 2b, we're asked to kind of go the other way. What are the vertex, focus, and directrix of the parabola with the equation x equals 3 fifths y squared? Well, we notice that x is the one that's alone and y is the one that's squared. And we see that we have a positive a value. So we've got the same shape as in the previous question. Here's my directrix. Here's my focus. Notice when I'm drawing these sketches, it's really just so that I can wrap my head around the way things look. There's no scale. We're not at all worried about what these actual points are. It's just a reference. So if the a value is 3 fifths, that means that 1 over 4c is equal to 3 fifths. And this one already looks like a proportion, so I would think of cross multiplying and then dividing by 12 to get c is 5, I'm sorry, a is 5 twelfths. No, no, c is 5 twelfths. I was right the first time. All right, so we know that the distance from the vertex to the focus is 5 twelfths of a unit, and the distance from the vertex to the directrix is also 5 twelfths of a unit. So the focus is going to be the 5 twelfths and then 0, because it's moved to the right but not up or down. But the directrix is going to be an x equals line, right, because it's a vertical line. So it's going to be x equals negative 5 twelfths, because it's to the left of the y-axis. Um, the vertex itself, we can see, has, is at the origin, because it, there's nothing to translate this graph off the origin. So our vertex is the origin, the focus is 5 twelfths 0, and the directrix is x equals negative 5 twelfths. So now we're going to get into a word problem application. Because conic sections are used all over. There's a conic section inside a flashlight. The reflector that brings the light forward out of the flashlight is a um, para parabolic reflector. When you see satellite dishes, whether it's for TV or radio or military applications, those are all either parabolic reflectors or hyperbolic reflectors. So we see them all around us. Let's look at number three. It says the mirrored reflector of a flashlight is 16 centimeters across and 10 centimeters deep. Okay, now whenever we see a word problem, we're gonna wanna be drawing a sketch. And if you think about it, you can hold a flashlight pointing in any direction you want to. 
So that means you can draw your parabola in any direction you want to. Some directions will make the problem much easier and some much harder. So if you think about it, what would you consider the normal way to face a parabola? Well, you'd probably think of that as having its vertex at the origin and facing up. If you were thinking of the most basic parabola you could think of, that would be it. So why don't we point our flashlight up and then the problem's as easy as it can be. Now it says the flashlight is 16 centimeters across and 10 centimeters deep. So the flashlight doesn't go on infinitely. Oops. Flashlight doesn't go on infinitely like a straight up parabola would. Instead, it ends somewhere. So when we say it's 16 centimeters across, we mean we're cutting this infinite parabola and that distance is 16. Well, if that distance is 16, then half of that distance is eight. So we've got this point at eight comma something and this point over here at negative eight comma something. Well, let's talk about the something. We're told that it's 10 centimeters deep. So where we're cutting that parabola is with a height of 10. So we now know those two points and we know this one was zero, zero. So if we had to, we could come up with an equation for, of this parabola by plugging those three points into a standard form equation and we could solve. We could also plug it into y equals ax squared, which is what we're going to do. So I know the point 810 is on the equation y equals ax squared. And I know a particular x and a particular y. So I can say 10 equals a, I'm sorry, yeah, 10 equals a times 8 squared. So if I divide both sides by 64, I know that a is equal to 5 30 seconds. So that tells me the a value, right? The equation for this parabola is y equals 5 30 seconds a. I'm sorry, x squared. But the question is, how far from the vertex should the light bulb be positioned? Well, let's think about this. There's a reason it's a parabolic reflector and not like a flat mirror behind the light bulb. That parabolic reflector collects the light that comes out of the bulb in all different directions and focuses it so that it comes out of the flashlight in a straight beam. Now the higher quality of the flashlight, the straighter and narrower that beam. Cheaper flashlights, the material for the parabolic reflector isn't as high quality and probably the reflector isn't as perfect of a parabola so the light tends to scatter and be dimmer. But in really high-end flashlights, that beam of light comes out nice and straight, which makes it brighter and more clearly illuminates whatever you point it at. So if A is 5 30 seconds, right, that has to be equal to 1 over 4C. So if I cross multiply 20C equals 32 and divide both sides by 20, then let's see, C is equal to 8 fifths. So that should be the distance between the vertex and the focus. So the focus, the light bulb, should be 8 fifths of a centimeter from the vertex. Now, we're talking centimeters. This would probably be given as a decimal, so let's go ahead and do that. So eight fifths, that's one and three fifths, so that's 1.6 centimeters. That's typically how a scientist would write it. All right, a couple more. What are the vertex focus and directrix of the parabola with this equation? And you're like, but wait, Mrs. Leonard, I thought we were doing everything centered on the origin. Yeah, we are focusing mostly on centered on the origin, but you have so much experience with parabolas. I think we can handle just a couple that are not. So when it says, what are the vertex focus and directrix of the parabola, I need this to be in more of a y equals ax squared sort of setup in order to figure out what's going on. So that means I need to see the translation. So we're going to complete the square. Let's take and subtract that 15 from both sides. And then we're going to need to add something to each side. Well, if this side was factored, then it would have to be x minus 3, which means 9 is being added to each side. So this is y minus 6. So now when we look at this, the parent would have been y equals x squared, right? The a value is 1. 
and we can see it's translated so that the vertex is at 3, 6. All right, well, in order to figure out, so we've answered one of the questions, what, this, what is the vertex? We need to figure out where the focus and directrix are. Well, if A is 1, then 1 equals 1 over 4C. So multiplying both sides by 4C, 4C equals 1, and C is 1 fourth. So the focus and directrix are each 1 fourth of a unit away from the vertex. Well, this is a traditionally positioned parabola, right? It's opening up, but its vertex is at 3, 6. So its focus has to be above that point. So the focus in this case will have the same x value as the vertex, but it will be one quarter higher. Now, normally, you know, I'm not a big fan of mixed numbers, but it just kind of makes sense in this problem. The directrix, on the other hand, will be one quarter below the vertex. So the directrix is going to be a horizontal line, so y equals, and it's going to be one quarter less than six, so five and three quarters. You won't see a lot translated off the origin, but just a little bit when we're talking about parabolas because you have so much experience with them. Number five asks us, which is an equation of the parabola with the vertex 10, 2 and a focus at 10, 1? I always find this question disappoints me a little bit because you can really do it based on translation and you don't need to know any of this new stuff. So if you take a look at that, the only one that's been translated 10 spaces to the right and two spaces up is B. So we didn't really have to do any of this new stuff in order to understand number five. You should be ready to do the lesson one daily practice.